to start, we're going to look at input because with input, that is the phase of an interaction with a computer that we, the, you know, the, the lunchable on the other side of the keyboard get to interact with. And from our experience, it's probably the most important phase is our ability to interact with a computer. So an input device is anything that we can use that is going to allow a computer to make a decision based on that input. Now, I do want to mention here, because for some of us, we will never have thought of this before, is that a computer is perfectly capable of interacting for either large swatches of its life or for its entire life without any real need for input from us. So I'm thinking about things like on the other side of this, I have an atomic clock. The only thing that atomic clock needs me to do is put batteries in it. After that, it's like, I got this. I don't need you for any other component. And that's absolutely the case. And really, when we are going about our lives on the internet, when we are going about our lives just being a modern consumer, there are a host of computer interactions that we will discover that we are having through the rest of this entire course, but that really don't require us to do much of anything at all. So we think that input is the most important component, and really it's kind of like the second to the last most important component, because computers really don't need us altogether that much all of the time. So we can think of things, the traditional things that we do for input, like a mouse is absolutely an input device. That is how I can point my cursor around. You know this. The keyboard is an input device. That is how I type, you know, horrible screeds into Reddit or whatever it is that you're into. And those are the kinds of things that we are certainly accustomed to. There are, of course, now more and more adaptive technologies that we have for people with physical limitations. Um, those would be purpose-built um, for whatever needs that those would happen to be. So I'm thinking about, um, you know, the, the, the very low, um, uh, it's very low feedback uh, implementation. So if you think about things like alternative Xbox controllers that enable for alternative inputs. That's one way. Um, there are things like, they to you and me, they would look essentially like a straw. Um, and that would allow an input to be given to a computer to be able to do its job. One of the things that we are getting more accustomed to, I think, as a, you know, a computer user would be, so I'm holding up a pair of headphones here. Those we'll get to in output, certainly in a moment. But these really do represent for a computer input now, too. So if I was to use a wake word, it rhymes with Siri, um, here on any of my Macs, my computer would start to listen for my input, and that would be my voice. So voice input is certainly one of the places where we see really ex and exponential growth in the input realm. So there's tons of different ones. If you've got a, um, so I've got a little bit here of my, you know, the video setup. So a microphone would be an input. Anything where we are taking our express needs and wants for the computer and we are giving it to the computer, that is an input. So for us, it feels like that is the most important component of the human computer interaction is me being able to tell the computer what to do. And the opposite side of that, I mean, it doesn't turn out that that is true. The computer really doesn't care a whole lot about what kinds of inputs you have because it waits for what must feel like an eternity to a computer for you to do things like haplessly bang away at your keyboard. It's just we're slow compared to what the computer is now capable of doing, but it still does take input from us, a communication from us, and take it into the internals of the computer. So that is phase one for us, input.